Joe Biden calls for a national mask mandate at a press conference that included no questions from reporters. Kamala Harris is portrayed in the media as a moderate. Plus, Black Lives Matter protesters tell homeowners to give up their property? All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and his new running mate, Kamala Harris, because they were actually out yesterday. They made a, an appearance. They were at a press conference. They held a press conference. It was one of the strangest ones I've ever seen. But the topic was coronavirus, because that's what they think they can go after President Trump with. That is their angle. That is their big point of attack. And so what did Biden do? At the freest country in the world, the freest country in the world, Joe Biden called for a national mask mandate, forcing every American, anytime that person is outside, to wear a mask. Here's Joe Biden. Every single American should be wearing a mask when they're outside for the next three months at a minimum. So is this a suggestion from Joe Biden? Is this some kind of recommendation? Nope. Every governor should mandate, every governor should mandate mandatory mask wearing. The estimates by the experts are it will save over 40,000 lives in the next three months. That's right. Joe Biden is calling on the states to mandate people wear masks whenever they're outside. Is he talking about inside businesses where those businesses can set rules? No. Is he talking about close proximity when you can't social distance? No. What he said was anytime a person is outside, they have to wear a mask. It is mandated. That's what he's talking about. So then Biden moves from the totalitarian to the nonsensical with this. And uh, it's not about your rights. It's about your responsibilities as an American. The fact is that as Americans are lining up to give blood, Americans volunteer all their time for food banks and local charities supporting their neighbors that are in need. Well, this is no different. All right, where to start on that one? First of all, in the United States of America, it is always about rights. It is not a trade-off between rights and responsibilities. Our rights are there no matter what. It's just it's unreal that a person trying to be president of the United States would say that rights don't matter, that it's not about rights. Give me a break. Our foundation, our freedom, the reason we are the beacon of the world as far as freedom is because we say these rights are inherent, that you can't take them away. They already exist. They aren't granted by the government. They are there. The government has to respect them, acknowledge them before we can do anything else. And he says, it's not about rights. Give me a break. Then he talks about people being responsible and lists this laundry list of volunteer activities, things people do on their own to help other people. And he tries to make that compared to a mandate forcing people. He uses volunteer activities to make a comparison for a mask mandate. So then he brings his running mate on, Kamala Harris, who speaks more nonsense. Now she gets up to the podium and talks about Joe Biden's plans to go after coronavirus. And here's what she says. In terms of creating a pandemic testing board to get tens of millions of testing kits where needed, to build a public health jobs corps, hiring at least 100,000 Americans to lead us through contact tracing as soon as we take office, and to chart a clear path forward for a safe and effective vaccine. Wow, this is unreal, folks. First, she's talking about millions of testing kits, getting testing kits out there. We've been doing that. Millions of tests have been administered. Millions of tests are available. It's just making a statement that has no basis on anything. It's not accomplishing anything because it's already being done. Then, another government spending program on 100,000 jobs, government jobs, for contact tracing? No way, Jose. 
There's no way we should be complying with that, participating with that, or funding that. It is absolutely outrageous. And then talks about a vaccine, that we need to move forward with a plan on a vaccine. Hello, you are way behind the times. And then what's so weird is that Biden and Harris then just walked out. They took no questions from reporters at all at a press conference. Is this is how it's going to be? Are the media just going to stand for that? That these people can make statements, talk about a national mask mandate, and not take a single question? Well, later in the day, President Trump held a press conference, actually took questions. He blasted Biden and Harris on the politics of coronavirus, went after Biden specifically, and here's what he said. Today we saw Joe Biden continue to politicize a pandemic and to show his appalling lack of respect for the American people. That's what it is. At every turn, Biden has been wrong about the virus, ignoring the scientific evidence and putting left-wing politics before facts and evidence. Sleepy Joe opposed both the China and the Europe travel bans. That was awesome. And whether it's Biden or Pelosi or the Democrats or the media, any action that President Trump took, and he took actions very early, they opposed it. Everything that President Trump did, they opposed. So then President Trump went on and addressed this national mask mandate. But while Joe Biden would allow rioters and looters and criminals and millions of illegal aliens to roam free in our country. He wants the federal government to issue a sweeping new mandate to law-abiding citizens. He wants the President of the United States, with the mere stroke of a pen, to order over 300 million American citizens to wear a mask. So I just love that comparison. If you're rioting and looting, you can break the law. It's okay. It's all good. You want to go protest? You can disobey the lockdown orders. But then for law-abiding citizens, Joe Biden has a new order, a national mask mandate. It's absolutely outrageous. So folks, let me know what you think in the comments. Who's right on this? Biden? Trump? Would you wear a mask outside anytime if you're forced to do it? Let me know. So next, I want to talk about Kamala Harris. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. We're making our push for 100,000 subscribers by election day. 100K by election day, and we can do it with your help. So next, let's talk about this running mate. Let's talk about Kamala Harris. We focused on her on the last show, but there's been this, this week, watching this week in the media has been just fascinating because they are so corrupt. They only have an agenda, only push a left-wing narrative, and that narrative, that goal, is to get Biden and Harris elected. So one of the things they have to do is paint Harris, who is a radical leftist politician, they need to paint her as a moderate. And it's like the talking points went out, the memo went out, and all the media are working together in collusion to paint Kamala Harris as a moderate. And here's the story. The mainstream media has rushed to portray Senator Kamala Harris as a moderate from the moment presumptive 2020 Democrat presidential nominee Joe Biden selected her as his running mate. But she campaigned over the past year as an unabashed progressive. The New York Times was roasted for immediately calling Harris a pragmatic moderate when alerting Biden's decision. But that was only the beginning of what critics feel appears to be a coordinated message. Are you kidding me, folks? A pragmatic moderate? She is far left on anything and everything. Every policy. Open borders. Check. Green New Deal. Check. Higher taxes and regulations. Check. Government-run health care. Check. Pro-abortion. Even late term. Check. It is crazy. That is her record. That is her record. And she is being portrayed as a pragmatic moderate? It's outrageous. And here's more of the story. ABC News anchor George Stephanopoulos declared on Wednesday that Harris comes from the middle of the road, moderate wing of the Democratic Party. Stephanopoulos added, not the first choice of progressives, but Joe Biden banking that hit this historic move as the first woman of color on a national ticket will overcome that. Give me a break. For one thing, I can't stand that first of this or first of that. It's a person running. Give me a break. No one's being oppressed here. Next, you've got 
New York Times. That was ABC News. Well, guess what? Of course, you can throw CNN into the mix, too. Senator Harris is viewed as much more of a moderate within the Democratic Party, so much so that she was even attacked by progressives as not progressive enough to the Democratic primary in 2020, CNN White House correspondent Jeremy Diamond said on Wednesday. CNN's S.E. Cup echoed the comments by saying, What I've said about Kamala is that for a moderate and rights, independent, even conservative never-Trumpers, she's not a bridge too far. Give me a break. These people are calling her a moderate? It's just absolutely outrageous, folks. So next, I want to talk about Black Lives Matter because we see the fallout from the lawlessness. And I've said this over and over again. If you allow lawlessness and rioting and looting and vandalism, you're going to get more. Not only are you going to get more, but these people are going to escalate. They're going to demand more until it just becomes this showdown between people who are willing to take a stand. Democrats running these cities aren't doing anything. And so it's eventually going to come to us because they refuse to act and we see the fallout. Look at what's going on in Seattle. We have a group of Black Lives Matter protesters now moving out more into the suburbs, calling on people to give up their property. And here's the story. Black Lives Matter activists in Seattle are demanding homeowners willingly give up their property to black people as a form of reparations because they're coming for it one way or another. Footage of the new demands was live streamed Wednesday night by Concrete Reporting via Periscope app and quickly spread across social media. Give up your house, exclaimed one of dozens of activists marching through a neighborhood. Give black people back their homes. You're sitting there comfortably, comfortable as F, as if they didn't help gentrify this neighborhood. I used to live in this neighborhood and my family was pushed out and you're sitting up there having a good time with your other white friends. Give up your house? Yeah, right. How far do you think that's gonna go? These people weren't pushed out. That doesn't even make sense. But there, tell them people to give up their property? This is again, this is the fallout from Democrats allowing lawlessness, condoning violence, too afraid or complicit with these protesters, these activists, this chaos and anarchy designed to bring down the Trump administration and put fear in the minds of people so that they will accept control from the left. This is what you get. Telling people to give up their property because they're coming for it one way or another? Good luck with that. Give me a break. So that is Seattle in Portland. One of the organizers behind this protest, which is now extended past 70 days, wants nothing more than the destruction of the United States. And here's the story. A radical group credited with organizing anti-police rallies in Portland openly cheers violence and explicitly rejects efforts to keep protests peaceful, a Daily Caller News Foundation review found. The Youth Liberation Front is credited with organizing protests in Portland last week that extended into the early morning hours and turned violent, the Seattle Times and Associated Press have reported. Portland police declared riots on multiple nights throughout the week. The radical group's goals extend far beyond changing policies and even beyond abolishing the police. As noted in a tweet, we don't want to be led and we don't want to lead. We just want to destroy the United States of America. This is what's going on. Seattle, Portland, Chicago, cities across the country, led by Democrats, allowing lawlessness, allowing rioting and looting. And now these protesters, these rioters, these vandals and thugs, this mob is getting more and more bold, bolder and bolder by the minute, demanding now people give up property, wanting to destroy the United States, and the Democrats are doing nothing about it. So that, I think, is a perfect segue this delusional left, these Democrats, to ask, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call, like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. All right, first of all, let's go to the, back to this mandated mask thing, because we all know what this is about. If people social distance, you don't need a mask. The whole six feet was the distance determined that you could cough or sneeze and it'd be okay. Remember, the Surgeon General, Fauci, others, First calling, no masks. All of a sudden, they change their tone. It's just outrageous, folks. If you social distance, you do not need one. But now, it's all about the symbolism. It's all about the politics. It's this sign when you go out in public that we are living in fear. 
that something bad is there and we need the Democrats and the left to rescue us. And it's gotten so outrageous, people are wearing masks just to wear masks. Indy 500 practice started this week. Here's a picture of one of the reporters giving a report. He's got a mask on inside his house. How ridiculous is that? But that's not isolated. There is an agency in Wisconsin that has sent out an email telling its employees that when you participate in Zoom meetings, you need to wear a mask, even if you're inside your own home. Here's the story. In a July 31st email, the Department of Natural Resources Secretary Preston Cole reminded employees that the governor's mask order, which requires anyone over the age of four to wear a face covering while indoors, was to take effect August 1st, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reported. Also, wear your mask, even if you are home, to participate in a virtual meeting that involves being seen, such as on Zoom or another video conferencing platform by non-DNR staff, Cole said, according to the Sentinel. Set the safety example, which shows you, as a DNR public service employee, care about the safety and health of others. I, I don't know what to say about that. Zoom meeting at home by yourself, wear your mask. It's just absolutely outrageous. So then I want to close with Tucker Carlson because he totally cracked me up this week because he mispronounced Kamala Harris's name. So now I'm a stickler for names, folks, and pronouncing things the right way, looking it up, seeing what's going on. But when it comes to names, there's only one rule. It's how does that person pronounce the name? And she pronounces it Kamala Harris. Well, the other night he said Kamala. He said Kamala Harris and the left went nuts. They called him racist for pronouncing it that way. They said it was on purpose. The Washington Post ran this headline that said, Tucker Carlson's mangling of Kamala Harris's name was all about disrespect. That's what they said. Okay, the very next day, Joe Biden said the exact same thing and Tucker Carlson had a blast pointing it out. I told him I wanted to be the last person in the room before he made important decisions. That's what I asked Kamala. <laughs> it's just too awesome. Just when you think darkness is descending, old Joe Biden shows up. I just absolutely love it. And the media, they get the relaxed brain because they said nothing about it. Tucker Carlson pronounces it one way. He gets roasted as a racist. Joe Biden says the exact same thing no one says anything about it. That example right there is enough for relaxed brain. And it's a perfect example to take your friends and colleagues to show them how twisted and corrupt the left are, the media. There's no journalism anymore. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13 minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.